Hello everyone, Wangjo here, and welcome back to the channel. So last night I checked the poll results for the faction vote video, and as you can see, the winning faction was the Cabal, led by the Fallen Light Magister himself, Engwin Van Hosman. So in a minute, I'll get the campaign started and we'll actually go with our quest to gather all the books of arcane knowledge. But I know some people are interested just to see what the faction effects are and the lord effects are, and I wanted to share about one or two of the mods I'll be using for this playthrough in particular. So, without further ado, let's get started. So this bit here, you guys already know about, and I'll go into more detail when we get onto the campaign map itself. But you can see that Chaos Warrior units and all my armies get plus 5 leadership. The upkeep cost for Chaos Sorcerer Lords and Chaos Sorcerers are cut in half. And Chaos Warriors, Aspiring Champion, as well as Chaos Knight units, all get plus 5 melee defense. As for Engwin Van Hosman himself, all Chaos Sorcerers will get a 10% magic resistance and 5% ward save. So, com may combine them to give you 15%, pretty cool. And it does mean that we're going to be having quite a few magic users in our armies, which is quite thematic given that we are followers of Zeech. Now, we're going to start the campaign, and I'm going to talk about the mods. So there's a mod pack linked in the video description below and essentially it's the same as what I'm using for Numas and what I use for Talakwa, as in we've got the closer to tabletop overhaul and a bunch of other ones. There are two specific mods though that I'm using for this Chaos playthrough. The first one is Chaos Rising which just adds a couple of extra things like makes it so the Marauder Horsemen have rage and so on like their Norsegun counterparts and most importantly for me Get rid of the chaos infighting mechanic, which I really, really hate. So that's that bit. But the bigger one, I guess, is overwhelming chaos. Now, I've got that and the add-on, which means that we've got a whole bunch of units added to our recruitment pool. But in particular, a good thing is, as I'll show you guys in a minute, we can actually make thematic armies. We can actually have them follow a specific god, rather than just be generic troops. But we'll talk about that in just a moment. First of all though, as you can see, here's Engwin Van Hosman and his warband, as well as Acold, a Sorcerer of Death. Well, I was actually kind of hoping for someone like Fire or Metal or something, just because I haven't used those laws in ages. But hey, we'll deal with Death nevertheless. At least we had plenty of practice with it thanks to Numas, eh? Hey? So, this is where we start off with in the cold north of Nagrant. We've got the Hmong encampments within marching range, and we've also got a city of the Deadwood Sentinels down here to the south. If we pop onto the map, we can see there's actually a little shiny bit here, which is something we're going to be talking about in just a moment. And we've got Grand nearby, we've got Asgol, of, sorry, Agol, not Asgol, that's something completely different. And of course, Nagrant, we've got Hmong heading all the way over here. So, something for us to bear in mind, because there's a particular way we're going to start this campaign off. If we head back to here, that is. First of all, we need to talk about the campaign objective. Now, it's said about going after these books of arcane knowledge, right? And we need to come up here for it. So, essentially, there are eight books of knowledge spread around the map. We've got our first one right near us with Nagawand. And the others are down near Hexotl, we've got two over in Ulfran, we've got one in the Southlands, some down in Lustria, and we even got this one at the Galleon's Graveyard. Oh, I just noticed we've only allowed to get five books. Interesting. I'm going to go with the idea that we're still going to go for eight, but in my means we have to be a bit careful about which five we collect initially. So the first book we are going to get is up here at Nagorant, because it's right nearby, and it gives us an opportunity to find the Dark Elves. But what I'm going to do is let you guys pick name where we're going to go for the other books. Now, I'll show you what each book does and whereabouts it is, so you have an idea. So we've got Hexato over here for Immune to Attrition. It's uh, down in Lustria proper for us to gain Chaos Corruption and Vigo Loss Reduction. The Awakening, which is the Vampire Coast Province, which gives us extra recruitment rank and recruitment duration. The Galleon's Graveyards, where Kalnoctilus happens to be. You know what, I've never actually fought a, a battle over here, so that could be quite an interesting one to go for. We've got Gale Vale, which is the capital of Avalon over in Lustria, the Count of the Everqueen herself. Lothian, now I didn't realise this, 
This one actually gives us a Lord of Change. You're sure the Storm Chaser. Okay, I think we definitely need to go for this one as well. I want a Lord of Change, what can I say? That'd be pretty cool to have. So that's definitely a second option, I think. And then we've also got the Black Tower of Arkhan for this last bonus. So we're going to go explore the world, get some books. Okay, just like being a holiday, you know? Next, I need to showcase... This is our army here. Now, we do have a whole bunch of new buildings, thanks to the Overwhelming Chaos mod. Which has actually changed a couple of things, because I noticed we don't start off with the Cabal. Which is what uh, lets that unique build in to Engwin we should have had already. And I haven't had a pop-up saying about the score of Katam or Kahem, a magical item he starts off with. But that's okay, I'd happy to sacrifice those because we pop on here, there's a whole bunch of new buildings. Now this is the unique building I definitely want to get, the Cabal itself. Makes sense given that this is our faction. But as you can see, we've got other ones. We've got these ones here, for example, for Chaos Dwarves. So we can get access to some Dwarf Crossbowmen, Rifles, and even Fire Masters, whatever these guys do. We've got access to some of these Mordor ones, like Hell Riders, excuse me, of Slanesh. Chaos Trolls, we've got. But the most important thing, and the reason why I like this mod, is because we got these. We can get Cult of Corn, Zeech, Slanesh, and Nurgle. And each one gives you thematic units for that god. So the Cult of Zeech, for example, as you can see here, gives us cultists, cultist spearmen, warriors, warriors of Zeech, and so on. Next one up gives us Chosen of Zeech, as well as Mordors of Ravens, hosts. And then the last one gives us Knights of Zeech and Chaos Dragons, Guards of Change. So I thought this would be a very thematic, you know, opportunity for us to get a proper Zeech horde, you know? And as we get more Chaos Lords, we may actually add in some more gods. Apart from Nurgle. Siege and Nurgle don't get on too well. So we may leave that. But first of all, we need to decide where we're going to go. Now given that Nagarond is our first objective, what I'm thinking is take the opportunity to build up our strength a bit. So what I'm thinking is, we'll go after the Hmong encampment. Head along here to go after, what's this place? The Palace of Ruin. Head back along the coast in order to go after the Deadwood Sentinels and take Shargef. Well, actually, we can explore Shargef. Shargref. But go after Nagra, the Frozen City, Dargoth, and so on. We can make our way in and against Grond. And then we'll see what happens over here. If we're powerful enough to take on the Witch King, we will do so. Otherwise, we may just make our way through the mountains again, finish off Mung, and come down here, come back through the mountains and be in a position to go after Nagaron then. So it gives us the opportunity to build our strength up a bit before we actually try and go after the big objectives. Which makes sense for any Total War campaign. But first of all, with this cloud in the way, let's burn down the encampments. We will indeed. Right, I think that's going to be easy or to resolve by any means. Now, do we want to raise or loot? To be honest, I'm just going to raise it. We're not going to get a lot of money from this at the moment. And I'd rather get that horde growth going pretty quickly. Ooh. Picked up a relic sword. Excellent. Let's have a look. There we go. Plus four weapon strength. And you can see his little bonus there. In fact, Acold, what do you have? You have aggressive. Okay, that's not too bad. Compared to typical sorcerers, chaos ones tend to be quite good in melee. Not really good, but they can hold their own, which is better than some sorcerers which are so squishy, you know? So, Acold, what are we going to do with you? Well, I'm actually thinking, if we're going to head over this way, let's have you do some technology stealing against the Frozen City. Not that we particularly need it, but we might as well start improving his skills, and in particular, might as well work with campaign ones first, because he's going to be able to scout things out. Let us know where enemy armies are as we make our way through this cold world. Now you've leveled up, and we now get some research. Let's go Path to Ruination for Casualty Replenishment Growth. Who's next? Engrim. Let's give you Root Marcher, or Wild Marcher. But I'm also going to give you Tribes of Chaos, so we get that extra bit of growth coming in already. And then, Acold. Let's just give you Specialists. There we go. Excellent. So now we've taken this. 
I do need to decide what we're going to do here. To be honest, I'm going to burn this down. I'd rather have Chaos Warriors, and I believe we can get those pretty... Oh, no, we... hang on. I better double... No, we can't. Okay, <laughs> that's... It's a fair enough thing. I'm glad I didn't... I'll cancel that. Right, because next turn we'll be able to get some units. Christ. I had in my head that... Um, you normally start off with a higher tier... Yeah, do you not normally start off with a higher tier horde? Or at least the opportunity with the population bonus to get to the second tier pretty early on? Or is that just me? No matter. The point is, we still have the ability to recruit some troops. So we'll have a look to see if, if we want any new Marauders before her, as we move along. If they're heading over here, I don't know if we want to attack the Frozen City straight away necessarily. Let's have a look. But we can't do much regarding growth, so we might as well make our way over here anyway. But do we want to go after these guys or not? We'll check in the next turn. Let's have you block the army. There we go. Must well improve his magic a bit more. Let's do this. Let's go for wound this time. And then, what do we want for technology? Scrutiny the guard, dark guards. 15% more to cast. Or income. Let's go for skulls of the skull throne. The reason being, I don't particularly want to raise settlements down yet if they're not making a lot of money. Because we're managing okay ish in terms of money. So, if we can get any bonuses though to the amount of money we make from fighting battles, I'm quite happy to work with that. And then we can start on improving our growth by raising settlements and just getting the growth bonus for that turn. I think that will work out much better for us. And Jesus Christ, this goes by so quickly now. Right. Let's have a look. Let's have you attack these guys again. Failure. Bugger. Okay. What do they actually have as a garrison? Bleak swords, bleak swords, dread spears, dark shards. What am I going to do then is let's make our way past them. If they want to come up and attack me, that's fine. But we may just bypass them for the moment to go after the Palace of Ruin. So let's go on here in camp. And let's see if I get in a few more units, shall we? Could get some Chaos Warhounds. Or oh, these guys. Let's grab some horsemen, in fact. There we go. Okay. Now, starting the next episode, I think I'll just share some information about. You know, do a little bit of lore stuff so we can talk about, like, who these characters actually are. What they're, you know, what the gods are up to and so forth. Just, so they're not going to be exactly lore videos, but I don't mind sharing a bit of information I do know about Chaos and that. So, let's fight this battle first, though. I'm going to have a few... Luckily, I don't have many Dark Shards and Dark Riders. This should go in our favour pretty easily, but we're going to fight the battle myself. So we can see how it goes. Now, as you guys know, though, it takes a while to load up on my computer, so we're going to cut straight to the battle, and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Okay, guys, here we are. Now, I'm pretty happy with this level of magic, so let's start off with just going to deployment. But before we actually just get things set up, let me just show you a case two particular units. First of all, the Champions of the Raven over here. Now, bear in mind, since we can't exactly create things from scratch, it's quite cool that we've got these unique Chaos Warriors. As you can see here, they're much better statted than Chosen are, for the most part. Well, in fact, they're pretty similar, their melee defense is better. The only issue they have, though, is they're special champions and specialists. So they're not explicitly tougher, they should, they're not exactly designed to be fighting as part of a team. But we've got this really cool unit here, nevertheless. And then over here, we've got Engwin von Hosman himself. Armed with the Sword of Change that's capable of changing uh, anyone wounded by it into Chaos Spawn. He's going to be a nice addition and a great leader for this army. And especially this cool, sp you know, staff of the Scythe on the end. That's pretty cool. And everyone else has got this really cool, you know, Zeech purple colour. Very, very cool. Sorry, it's like a purpley blue, I should say. 
anyway, we need to set this up. What I'm thinking of doing is basically have a nice, big, strong line, come at straight at the enemy, send our faster units and our mounted units around to flank them, and kill them off, basically. So what I'm going to do, let's grab you guys, something like this, I think, should work quite nicely. So we'll grab you guys, put the Marauders here, put the these guys straight, straight in the center, spread you out a bit. So we should be able to swarm them by heading around the flanks as well. We'll put Chaos Knights over on this side to charge in. The Manticore can stay on this side. And Engram, of course, can stay in, in the center, start the battle, and start moving in. Oh, they're actually coming towards me. Well, well, Chaos, we don't just stand by, we head towards them instead. Right, can we cast any magic at them yet? Not just yet. Oh, there we can. Blast them. Okay, what do we have over here? Cold ones. Let's have my Chaos Manticore come down and attack these guys. Should be able to deal with them and corner off that side easily enough. Right. You guys can get over the side too. Alright, you guys can have fun over there. Let's just charge you guys straight in. Everyone else get into position and charge into here, here. You guys come over here. You guys charge into the flank there. You guys come in and attack these. You guys come in and attack these. You guys come in and attack these too. You guys come over and deal with these. You guys come and deal with these. You guys over here, and then you two... You might as well come in and help with the Manticore for the moment. And then, Engrim, let's have you blast some of these people with magic, please. Shem's burning gaze straight into them. Thank you very much. Now charge in. He's quite a decent combatant, so I'm quite happy to allow him to get involved. He'll be able to deal with these guys, no problem, anyway. Alright, just to help things out a little bit, let's make my troops unbreakable. Yeah. Right, let's slow things down a minute and see how we're doing. Chaos Knights, we got Dread Spears coming in, Dark Riders getting slaughtered. Okay, we may ask you guys to switch around to attack these. You guys come over here and attack these instead. Uh, what have we got here? Bleak Swords. Not doing so well. Okay, let's have Chaos Marauders, Great Weapons. Let's have you guys come over here and attack these in the rear, please. Right, let's do another Shem's Burning Gaze, if we can, over on this unit. Okay, how are we doing over here? Okay, Chaos Knights, let's have you come and attack the Dark Shards. Chaos Marauders, come over here and deal with these. Marauders, come and deal with these. And uh, Grey Weapons, come over here and attack these. Alright. You need to come over here and fight these. My Manticore... Damn it. My Manticore has gone kind of mad at this point. Okay, come over here and deal with these. You guys see about dealing with these in combat? Okay, let's slow the action down a minute and see how we all do it. God, the Chaos Spawn look disgusting. <laughs> Just what you want for Chaos Spawn, actually. These guys are starting to rout. Okay. I say they've done an extremely good job against these bleak swords, haven't they? And here's my champions of the raven. Slashing away. That man managed to get a spear. Wow, he's managed to get two cuts straight through him. That guy's got sent flying. Oh dear. Right, how are these getting on? Apparently, you're losing against dark shards. I have to be honest, I'm not sure how comfortable I feel about that. Given the fact, I know you've taken a few casualties, but still, you should be doing better than this. Okay, let's have a look. Chaos Warriors. We need a year to come over here and deal with these a bit more. Alright, why are you guys taking a few hits? Okay. Let's make sure... Does anyone need a bit of a boost? Let's hit. cast it here for you guys. Alright. Okay, let's have you guys now charge into the rear of these guys. 
That should be enough now to break them. Okay, Manticore is back. Fantastic. Slow things down again. Let's have... Yeah, you guys can chase after these. You guys... Chase after these guys. Manticore, let's have you... Come after these. In fact, Dark Shards... I'd rather you ha chase after some Dark Shards, please. Okay. Chaos Warriors, come over and defeat this Dreadlord. Chosen of Halberds. Let's have you head up to here. Engrim, blast him, please. Champions of the Raven. Nah, I think we're pretty good now at this point. You guys can charge forward to attack these. Alright, Marauders, make your way after these. Spawn, come and attack these. Chosen, come after these. Alright. Where is my Manticore? Manticore, change the priorities. Go after these Dark Shards. Okay, Engrim. Let's give you some might. Blast these as you do so. Go after their, their Dreadlord, please. Alright, you guys need to finish off these. Oh, there we go, victory is mine. A close victory, it says. Huh. Wow, these guys did quite well. 168 kills, 178. 62-62. Oof. To be fair, we did much better than I predicted. But I'm still going to have to get into the swing of how to use these units effectively. Because Chaos Armies are not really big, right? And especially since my own preference for fighting playing as them, both on the tabletop when I was into Warhammer tabletop, and in real life, you know, like in Warhammer, I should say, is to rely quite a bit on Chaos Warriors rather than the Norsecan troops and the Marauders. So something I may have to bear in mind uh, later on as well. But for now, guys, we'll see you guys on the campaign map in just a minute. Alright, so we managed to get a fair bit of loot out of that, or Dark Favor, or whatever it's, the currency is supposed to be by. Leveled up a bit too. Now, sacrifice the captives. Let's get some more favor going in for us. Did you? You didn't manage to make it back to the frozen sea. Oh, you did now. Okay. Well, they can go off and lick their wounds. I think we need to do that a little bit as well, but we may just move away from the frozen city for the moment. Alright, let's have a quick look. Yeah, I think this is going to be a pain in the neck to deal with, especially with more units and with us taking a few hits. Although we are pretty much back up now, aren't we? Hmm. Okay, let's just continue on our journey over to this way, I think. Do do do. Okay, and if we grab a coat, can we actually stop by here? I believe we can. Right. Let's have a quick nosy, see if we can find anything of useful in the ruins. What is thy will? Oh crap. It's, I hate this one. Throughout the world, blah blah blah, fast trust. Believe in that alignment is all. So guys, if you happen to know how to do this, I would really appreciate it, because I have no idea. I honestly, like, it puzzles me. Like, I can see, like, yellow here, so I can work out, right, this should spin around so the yellow one comes here. But I don't know which one's which. Like, does the yellow one come to this one? Does what? I don't know. Or does it spin around so that stays in the middle, but then the others don't? I have no idea. Um, I'll tell you what, imagine if we do spin it, so that probably come up to here. Uh, I don't know, that, I'll just make a guess. There, failed. There you go. We shall weave the fates. Right, let's give you two more points in Tribes of Chaos, so we'll be able to grow up by one next turn. A cold, let's give you Block Army and Steel Technology. We could go for Spread Corruption as well, but we're okay so far. Right, and let's end the turn. So guys, in the next episode as well, what would you like to hear a little bit more about? 
Would you like to know about Ingram von Hossmann and his backstory? Would you like to learn a little bit more about the Chaos Gods? If there's anything like that that does catch your fancy, let me know in the comments as well. And we'll bear it in mind for the next episode. After all, these episodes are not just for me to record, it's for you guys to enjoy as well. So if you want to learn a bit about Warhammer and Chaos when you were doing it, by all means, let me know. Now, a cold. Actually, we can't, we can't ask you to do this again, can we? No, it was worth a check. Alright, let's have you go over towards the Palace of Ruins. Is there anything here for us to worry about? Not really. In that case, we've got a point circulation post. Let's move you guys up to here. Put you into encampments. And we can now upgrade this. So tribal gathering. Minus 20% upkeep. To double that. Proves our growth as well. And chaos corruption. That's fine. We'll do that. Okay. I've got some more points to spend for a cult. Let's give you... Let's give you runes and block army. Thing I should do. Right. So like I said, the plan is going to be, we're going to go after the plan, pa the Parnas, the Palace of Ruin now, take it, and then we're going to start making our way back down towards the Deadwood Sentinels. By then, we should be able to get a few more troops in the army, in particular maybe some more orders and what have you, so we can at least field a full stack. The only problem is, of course, we have to balance that out with the amount of upkeep we're getting. Now, luckily, that's gone up quite a bit, thanks to finishing this. But, let's continue making our way over here. You might as well steal some technology for us, get some more level. There we go. You know what? Let me check this out quick. Oh! Now that's cool. I never noticed, I didn't actually check this out before we started, but this actually is very, um... They've actually picked out, because normally Chaos doesn't get Favor of the Gods, the Old World Rituals that was added in Vermont. But it looks like they've actually added in, so the Cabal have got their own rituals. That's pretty cool. And some of these, especially like this, 10% ward save for all units. Blue Fire of Zeech for Mont Mont Wow, that's good. The ability to gather an army near our horde as well. Oof. I'm looking forward to getting our hands on some of those. Alright, so the next time we fight the Dark Elves, we might put a cold in with Engrim's army. That way then he gets the bonuses as well, but also means we have another magic user and another character to fight with us on the battle map. Especially someone with fire. Just yeah, lots and lots of damage. But there we go, skull, new upgrade done. Let's come and attack this. Nice and easy order resolve. Right. Again, I'm gonna raise it and get the growth back. Helm of Discord. Oh, that's gonna be useful. So not only does it give me plus two armor, but it also allows me to debuff enemies nearby. And that's gonna be extremely handy in the upcoming fights. Okay, Eckholt, make your way back now to the Frozen City, so we can see if we're going to be facing anything from the Deadwood Sentinels there. Okay, let's grab... Scrutiny of the Dark Guards next. Okay, and assign points. Let's give... Shem's Burning Gaze. Now, do we want Boon and Magic? To improve our power recharge rates. This one we already got. Fast protection, extra armor, melee defense. And we can do that as area effect. That's handy. Yeah, let's go for fast protection. Having the buffs for our troops. I mean, especially Chaos Warriors. You know, when we can buff up our, tro uh, our really good troops as well. We're just not going to have much opposition to worry about. Oh yeah, I forgot, you're not a fire man. I had my head, it was a fire sorcerer. Whoops. Let's give you... Let's give you Spirit Leech. And let's give you Spreading Corruption as well. No, let's just work on Spreading Corruption. There we go. Spread the favor of Chaos. Ow! 
And, ladies and gentlemen, I think that will be the end of today's episode. So we've raised a couple of buildings before they battle. We've tested our troops against the Dark Elves. And despite taking some casualties, we managed to come up on top. So next time, we're going to be heading back now to deal with the Deadwood Sentinels. Take out their settlements. And it's starting to improve our horde a bit more. And then start making our way back into the west. But that's all going to be happening next time. So for now, thank you very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed today's episode. And I hope you join me next time for more Warhammer. But until then, everyone, take care. And goodbye for now. Thank <laughs> you.